of November. Here we are indeed. I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, a, a chance to spend a couple of days in your company, Simon, is always something I'd look forward to. Uh, <laughs> and it would be great to meet some of the Inside the Wales listeners if they're at Ascot. So if you're listening to this and you're going to that Ascot meeting, please do come and have a chat with us. Yes, and who knows, we may get another chance to talk about Inside the Rails. Now, I'm delighted to say we've got former champion flat jockey Paul Hannigan on the line from Bahrain. Hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, hi, Simon. Yep, yeah, settled in well. Haven't been here too long. But yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys. Thank you. For the listener's benefit, you actually only flew over to Bahrain last night, so you've not even been in 24 hours. And, and I believe you've even ridden out a couple of lots this morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't quite expecting to ride out this morning. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, was, it was nice. It was, it, was, um, it was much nicer than riding out in the UK anyway. So it was, it was very nice. He enjoyed it. And as I say, I got here last night. Um, last uh, it was quite late at night so um, but yeah it's uh, it, it's it's good to be here excellent and you're going to be riding out there during our winter and uh, you're riding as I understand it for one of the country's biggest owners I uh, hope I can pronounce his name right Sheikh Issa bin Salman Al- Al-Khalifa now how did that come about and, and can you tell us a little bit about what the job will involve uh, how long you're going to be out there for just a little bit about the the, uh, the contract that, you, that you've got with Sheikh Issa I think it just depends how long I'm going to be out here. Depends on how I ride, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> it's uh, he's a very, very nice man, Shaky. So I've had a bit of a uh, look for him uh, in the UK and rode him some nice winners. And um, it was just a phone call from Shaky himself asking me whether I'd like to come over for the winter. Well, the first race meeting is this coming Friday. And. The last meeting is around about the 13th of March. So hopefully it can all go well. Excellent. Excellent. Now, in 2010, you became only the third Northern based jockey in over a century to win the Flat Jockeys Championship. And the following year, you outdid that. You became the first ever Northern based jockey to win two titles. Now, before we get on to that, Paul, how did you get into the sport? What's the Paul Hannigan story? I probably only just got over that in 2010. Uh, it was quite an epic, epic uh, duel. But Paul Hannigan's story really is, people might not quite believe, but not not really from a horsey background. Um, my dad had a, had a brief stint, wanted to be a jockey when he was younger, made the trip to Newmarket, didn't really work out for him and and went on to other topics in his life. Um, and then, believe it or not, one day, probably when a football match maybe got cancelled, I followed my dad down to the local yard. My dad started to ride out at weekends for the late Terry Caldwell, which is which was a small racing stable in the heart of Warrington, um, where I was born and brought up. And I followed him down there one day. And I remember, it like yesterday, sat there watching my dad on a horse coming up the gallops and just thought, yeah, that's for me. And the football took a, a backward uh, step. And um, I got on to, you know, we couldn't really afford uh, ponies at the time. So I was kind of in at the deep end on, I say quiet to horses, but Terry Caldwell didn't have many quiet horses. Is that to right? be honest, it was, <laughs> it, it, was uh, it really was in, in, in at the deep end, but I think it did me the world of good. And that's how I, that's how I started. And then onto, onto the British racing school, how, how long were you there for, Paul? How long at the British Racing School? Racing School, if I remember rightly, a few years ago now, it was a, it was a nine-week course. It, it, it might be different now. But I would recommend uh, either Racing School. It, 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 it's a must. You know, it, 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 you're great. You, you gain so much experience. And I, I had a little bit of a, a march on, on a few uh, that was on the same course as me. But you could go there with without any experience at all. You know, so that 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 was the story. Really, it was it was racing school, and then I actually, believe it or not, wanted to be a jump jockey. Started at Malcolm Jefferson's yard in Moulton. Oh, I remember Malcolm Jefferson. Yeah, 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 absolute uh, legend. Sadly, not with us now. But he sent me on to Richard Fahey, and and the rest is history. Really. 
I read a quote from Richard Fahey fairly on in your career. I think you'd ridden a fairly big winner, one of your first big winners. And he said, if this guy isn't champion jockey, I'll give up the game, which I thought was a lovely quote. And, uh, well, he didn't have to give up the game because you were champion jockey twice. And, and look, winning those championships must have been very special. How gruelling is it chasing winners up and down the country? I don't really think we're going to see in the modern era many multiple champion jockeys like Lester Piggott and Pat Edry. What, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, I mean, when Richard said that, I, I mean, I thought, God, there's no pressure then. Thanks, Rich. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm not champion jockey now. Then. But, I mean, going back to the championships, I mean, I think it kind of sums it up. My car did nearly 100,000 miles Wow, that season. I think that can put, put into context kind of the travelling that's involved and that's without flying as well. So... It really is grueling and um, it took me a while to, to, to get over it. I wouldn't change anything for the world because I really enjoyed it. But um, they, they, they asked me the, the question at the end of Doncaster, was I going to go for it again? And the answer was just straight away, no, because it was the worst possible time to ask me because I was so drained. I'd been in a battle as well with Richard Hughes um, and he went down to two winners in the end on the last day. That's a bit like, uh, I remember Pat Edry and Steve Gawson. I think they went to the, mm. to the wire, didn't they? And it was only two in it uh, one year. That's amazing. Yeah, it really it really was one of the closest uh, grueling championships, I think, in, uh, for a long time. So, But yeah, I loved every minute of it. It, uh, it took a bit out of me, but um, yeah, I, 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 owe, um, I owe, you know, that championship to, to a lot of, people that were very good to me that year well, well you're very very modest um look you've ridden some great group one winners you've you've won the oaks the eclipse the july cup twice the king george group one winners abroad um can i ask you which have been your favorite races and indeed your favorite horses that you've ridden to date i've, I've been blessed simon to ride some very very good horses look i've worked very hard to get to get where where i am but you know if it was to pick one or two then Obviously, you know, a kid growing up in, in Warrington with not much horse experience, I think to ride my first classic in, in the Oaks on Tagruda uh, for Sheikh Hamdan uh, was a special moment, special moment for my parents as well. So, yeah, that that's a standout. And, and I really, I, I go back to thinking of, you know, even winning the Air Gold Cup on Fontal Road, you know, being in the north, that, that was kind of like a, a derby for us a big big race to win you know so to to, to win that race for, for for richard was a was a really really special day and you rode for shake hamdan for, for quite a while was it was he a uh, an easy owner to, to ride for uh, he was a very good man and um, he liked his horses riding in, in in a certain way which i found difficult sometimes but uh, he's the owner and, um, and 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 that's how he liked it doing but I think uh, people always ask me that. It's a good question, but you've got to realise that Sheikh Hamdan had Willie Carson and, and Richard Hills uh, before me. So it was probably difficult for him to, you know, understand a different jockey, having them two jockeys for such a long time as well. So sometimes it could be difficult for, for both of us, but I would not change a single day for him. He, he was a He was a joy to ride for and... You know, I feel very privileged to have, have had the job. Don't, don't don't want you to betray confidences, but is it possible for you to say in what way he liked horses ridden? Can can you answer that? Is that is that okay? Well, yeah, sure. He, he liked he liked it to be uncomplicated. You know, keep it uncomplicated, which for me is is absolutely fine, great. But we all know ourselves that horses aren't machines. I'm afraid, and. Um, you know, a lot of things can, can go wrong in races, which you have to adapt to. I, I just found it sometimes very hard with, you know, my style of riding, um, where he's had other previous jockeys in, in, in the past riding for him, which kept it a bit more simple than me. But but a, apart from that, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It's quite interesting, Paul, because it's something Simon and I have been talking about quite a lot, which is the sort of the scrutiny that jockeys come under and perhaps in racing more than other sports, 
you know, you're constantly under the microscope, both from sort of the authorities and from the, the public and social media. I mean, do you sort of feel that? Is it is it a stressful thing for jockeys to be sort of coming under that scrutiny all the time? Well, I think so, Phil, because um, I think nowadays, especially with uh, the younger generation, they, they, they have to deal with like social media, which I think you have to be so uh, mentally tough now. Um, because there's no getting away from it. You know, that's what the world revolves around now, I think. And um, if, if if you have a bad day and, you know, people are going to say bad things, unfortunately. And I think you have to be really, really mentally tough. I mean, I've, I've, I've been luckily where I'm not one to take really things to heart on, on social media sites, but you would have younger kids now where uh, would you know take a lot in really would so um i think you know i think when you're a professional sportsman you've got to kind of just admit that you're going to be in the firing line uh, now and again um i think what sums it really up is uh, i i think it was the first season i had the job for shake hamdan i had six rides at warwick when warwick was on the flat um, I won on five of them, got beat on the other, and I got such a rollicking off the trainer for getting beat on my sixth ride. I thought, well, what can you do? <laughs> you can't win. I've just, I've just had five winners out of six rides, and I've got a rollicking for the for, for my last ride. So that, that's that. Just kind of, if that can just put it, you know, in, 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 into context, what you're only as good as your last ride, and I think you've you've, you've kind of got to have that mentality. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I'm glad during my career I didn't come under that level of scrutiny. I don't think I'd have enjoyed it very much. But um, yeah, moving on to a different topic. Um, I know you're now an ambassador for a charity, the Good Racing Company, um, which has just been launched. Can you tell us a bit more about that and how you're involved in it? Yeah, that, that's probably the most important thing. Never mind Paul Hannigan. So the the Good <laughs> Racing Company, you know, probably better people are, uh, are better probably looking at it, which is at the Good Racing Co set up by the lovely Phil Harfarn, who's the CEO. I mean, people listening and, and yourselves will probably have maybe followed uh, the Borough 7. This is the follow-up, really, um, from the Borough 7. Just quickly, the, the Borough 7 was a horse named in the honour of uh, rugby league legend Rob Burrow. He sadly got MND, uh, which is motor neuron disease, and the Borough 7 campaign, I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, it raised something like over 100,000 Pound towards the MNDA, um, Motor Neurone Disease Association, which is, you know, a fantastic achievement. And it, it, it really turned my head. Um, I got uh, Phil Hawthorn got in touch with me, kind of through a friend of a friend, really, and uh, and, and, and asked if, if I'd like to become uh, one of the am- ambassadors, which, you know, it was a no-brainer. I, I had the privilege of meeting Rob Burroughs one day, um, who's an absolute gent. And just, just quickly, really, I mean, the Good Racing Company, um, the gist is really it, it, the Good Racing Company purchase, purchases top quality horses. Um, and each horse is really partnered with one or more charity or causes, which is available for business or individuals. And they have the chance to buy a membership. Um, and their chosen horse goes to uh, the charities and all profits go to, go to the charities or causes, really. So... I mean, it, it really, everyone is kind of a winner. Yeah, sure. So uh, a way of giving to charity and actually getting something back at the same time. Yeah, because I think, you know, the members, you know, they receive a package through the post there and it's got your personal code to log in. You know, you keep up to date with all the horses, how the horse is doing, all the behind the scenes action. You know, there's lots, lots more to it. You know, they can have the chance to win tickets to go to, to the yard to, 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 to see the horse race. And as I say, I think everyone's a winner, really. Um, it's very exciting. Um, and I think it's just, it's a real good feel factor where you can give, you know, I think when you get a bit older and um, you realise that sometimes like you need a bit of help. I mean, I had an awful accident about two years ago where I um, broke three vertebrae in, in, in the back. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to walk again, never mind ride. But luckily I made a comeback and, you know, if I, it's sad to say, but sometimes it takes things like that just to make you sit up and think, you know, you're in that kind of bubble. 
and it's nice to give back and, ni- and, and, and nice to help. And I hope I can do this. Um, it's it, it's onwards and upwards. They've actually got the first horse now, and uh, it's called Go Go Chicago, and he's a five year old gelding. Uh, very-